Good evening, welcome to the Monday, June 10th, 2019 meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. May the roll call from the town manager, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chairman Garvin. Here. Councillor Devereaux. Here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Say anything. Everybody listen. <laughs> <I'm excited. laughs> uh, Councillor Jordan, Caitlin Jordan. Here. Uh, Councillor Penelope Jordan. Here. Councillor Valerie Randall. Here. And Councillor Christopher Straw. Here. Thank you. Uh, I I Deb Lane is preparing for tomorrow's uh, school budget validation elections. So uh, use that as a reminder, as I'm sure um, others might mention, that uh, tomorrow uh, is election day, school budget validation. Um, the polls are open from 7 a.m. till 8 p.m. over at the high school. Uh, it's the only item on the ballot for tomorrow, so I uh, shouldn't anticipate uh, any of the long lines and crowding that we had back in November, but please do go out and make your vote and voice heard. Uh, with that, would you all please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there any uh, reports or correspondence that anyone wishes to share? Councilor Devereaux. Just who is like present, to, by the way. <laughs> I'd just like to share that um, yesterday our um, seniors, high school seniors graduated at the uh, out at Fort Williams, it was a wonderful ceremony. It, um, it's just so wonderful to see so many people in the community show up, um, including council members and school board members. And I really wanna congratulate all of the graduates and their families, and also um, congratulate our four high school teachers who are retiring after many years of service at Cape Elizabeth. We really do appreciate you. Um, and thank you all so much for making it such a wonderful experience. Thank you, and congratulations to your daughter, one of the graduates. It was a beautiful day, and uh, it's also very well supported by the entire community. It's great to see people out there that ha both have children graduating or in school, but I, I saw and shook hands with a lot of people that are just there to support the community. So, I, I, Can I add one more thing? I also want to add that... Um, the award ceremony was last week for the high school graduates. And our community is so amazing and supportive of the students and so much of it is not, um, is not uh, advertised. There were so many scholarships given to our high school seniors. Uh, more than 88 of our 144 graduating seniors received scholarships from our community totaling over $76,000. And that's just from our community, not to mention um, scholarships that are national or statewide scholarships. So thank you so much to our community for your big support of, um, of all of our children. Thank you, any other counselors with anything to report? Um, I'll let you all know that I was earlier today over at uh, the offices of GP Cog, <clears throat> Greater Portland Council on Government for a joint luncheon meeting of the Regional Voice Committee, which I've joined, and the uh, Maine Municipal Association's Legislative Policy Committee. Um, so one of the things that um, uh, GP Cog has looked into recently is um, trying to bring together some of the regional leaders in some of the member communities um, with folks from the Maine Municipal Association and, and ultimately probably um, some representatives uh, to the state legislature um, to again collectively raise our voice uh, in a way that um, hasn't really been done in an organized fashion before uh, for issues that are of, of common interest to the communities in the greater Portland area. Some of the other parts of the state um, have historically been a little bit more organized and a little bit better at sort of um, uh, galvanizing a coalition around uh, you know their particular point of view on, on various items. So anyway, it was a good working lunch. Um, I think there will be future uh, good opportunities um, with that group. Um, uh, looking at things like economic development, transportation, um, housing, and, and chronic homelessness, um, uh, uh, issues of addiction, and things like that. So a lot of the major things that you know a lot of the towns and communities are dealing with. 
Um, so anyway, uh, that was one of today's activities. Any other uh, reports or correspondence from anybody? I guess I'll just Go mention ahead. briefly, um, I had the opportunity to attend a workshop, um, I guess it was a little over a week ago, uh, down in York that was hosted by a group of um, folks that do climate change adaptation, and it was on uh, municipalities and vulnerabil uh, vulnerability to sea level rise and climate change and municipal liability. Um, very interesting workshop. Um, came away with a couple of notes that I think we'd, I'd like to follow up on in some of the workshops, um, particularly around the issue of um, septic systems and vulnerability of septic systems to groundwater rise, um, which reaches farther inland than the sea level rise does. Um, so just um, wanted to put a placeholder in that, follow up later. That's good. Nobody has anything else. We'll move on to Councilor Straw and the Finance Committee report, please. Yep. So uh, you should all have the financial dashboard that you would have received earlier today, uh, along with the appropriation control, the expense distribution, the revenue control, and the revenue distribution. The one item that I would highlight uh, from that bunch is if you look at the revenue, we've now, uh, with another month to go in the fiscal year, have now hit 100% of our budgeted revenue, um, which is great to see. It's We, we budgeted conservatively last uh, time around and we, we've now met that number so kudos to the town manager with his planning um, anyone have any questions on any of the documents not seeing any I turn it back to the the chair thank you very much um, are there any citizens here that wish to speak to something that is not on tonight's agenda seeing none we'll move on to the town manager's monthly report Matt Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As uh, many of you may have or may have not noticed, today uh, was the beginning of phase two of the Scott Dyer Road reconstruction project. So the construction crew uh, made its presence known today and will be uh, making such known over the next couple of months. So we should see that project anticipated to be complete before school towards the end of, end of August. Uh, there may be some traffic disruptions, but, uh, but so please be, be patient is what, what we ask at this point in time. But we are happy to see this go forward. We do have phase three, which is, con is staged to be constructed next year that will complete the project. Uh, right now, phase two is the far end of Scott Dyer Road, uh, towards uh, down towards the intersection of Spurwink, up to uh, just this side of Comfy Cape uh, Daycare. As we approach the end of the fiscal year, the town's clerk's office will need to perform final year-end closing duties on June 28th, which is the last Friday of the month. To assist in a successful year-end closing, the, uh, that office will close at noon on the 28th, as we did last year, to perform these essential functions. So please plan ahead. Discussion with the pay and display vendor continue toward a contract and implementation in July for pay and display parking at Fort Williams. Updates will be posted on the town's website as more information is developed. Family Fun Day is this Sunday, June 15th, starting at 10 a.m. with a parade, and the fun will last all day, culminating with the family dance party at 7 p.m. and fireworks display at 9. And it looks like the weather is going to be cooperative, so keep your fingers crossed on that end, uh, but the rain date, if, if needed, will be on the following day on Sunday. And finally, as Chairman Garvin has alluded to, tomorrow is election day with the polls open between 7 a.m. and 8 p.m. with the school budget validation vote being taken, and the town's clerk's office will be closed to assist in the election. Uh, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any questions for the manager? Seeing none, uh, we'll start with review of the draft minutes of our special meeting that was held on May 6th and our regular meeting held on May 13th. There's there a motion to approve the minutes as prepared? So moved. Councillor Randall, is there a second? Second. Councillor Penny Jordan, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? It's unanimous. Our first item uh, then is the public hearing for the traffic regulations, the enforcement of parking fees at Fort Williams. Is there anybody here wishing to speak about this item? If you are here to speak on it, please come forward to the podium and give us your name. Seeing nobody, we'll close that public hearing. Uh, moving to item 104-2019. Chapter 13, Traffic Regulations, Enforcement of Parking Fees at Fort Williams Park. Um, this is sort of our last item, uh, save for the contract that Matt just alluded to with the parking vendor on tying off all the loose ends. 
uh, related to the decisions we made at last month's meeting uh, for paying display parking. Uh, so I'll be looking for a motion to um, uh, move forward and advance these uh, regulations so from the moved. ordinance committee. Moved by Penny Jordan. Is there a second? Second. Councillor Randall, any discussion? Councillor Devereaux. I was just curious, um, under penalty, the 13-2-6, you took out the um, payment within 30 days, that it needs to be paid within 30 days, but then further on, um, it states that um, if it's, if it's over, if you have two tickets that are over 30 days, um, then there's, it could be impounded and mobilized. Do we need to say in that top part about penalty that it needs to be paid within 30 days, or you think that's okay? I was just curious. What... So we had a discussion about um, how the fee schedule was going to be attached to this, and I think part of the reason for taking that out was because it referenced that if it was not paid within 30 days of the date of issuance, um, the fine would double, and we had talked quite a bit about how the police department will have to work with the, the agency that we use for parking enforcement at Fort Williams. We thought it would just be smoother. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what we had decided was that it would just be smoother if we had a fee schedule that laid out what the fees would be and how much they would be if they were X number of days late or um, so on from there. Okay, so there'll be a fee schedule attached to this. Right. Okay. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Any other discussion? I certainly agree with the idea of going with simplicity there and given the logistics of how to operate this, I think, I think that that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor of uh, accepting the amendments to, from the Ordinance Committee to Chapter 13 of the Track Regulations Enforcement of Parking Fees at Fort Williams Park. That's unanimous. Next up is public hearing for the draft comprehensive plan. Is there anybody here wishing to speak at this public hearing? If you are interested, please come forward. Seeing none, item number 105-2019, uh, draft of the comprehensive plan. Uh, we've been meeting regularly over uh, the last month uh, or thereabouts in workshops uh, that have been rather lightly attended, uh, if at all, um, to review a very thorough draft of the comprehensive plan. I uh, appreciate the work that both the comprehensive plan committee over their um, two plus years working on this, as well as staff um, have put into it. Um, I will use this opportunity as uh, encouragement for those that are interested um, to be sure to come out to our July 8th meeting uh, where we will have a second public hearing um, for the uh, public to have an opportunity to weigh in on this, uh, seeing as that there's no public comment tonight. Um, so without any, I'm uh, happy to entertain any uh, discussion, but uh, otherwise I'll be looking for a motion to table this item and set the second public hearing on the item to the date I just mentioned. So unless anybody has any discussion, Councillor Devereaux? No, I was just gonna say I'll go ahead and make the motion. Sure, moved by Councillor Devereaux, is there a second? <coughs> second. Councillor Caitlin Jordan, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Okay, so again, we'll um, have a second public hearing on Monday, July 8th at our regular meeting here at seven o'clock at Town Hall. Next up is items number 106 through 114-2019. Uh, this is um, uh, item prepared by the finance director for us to uh, go through all the various grants and appropriations for the end of the fiscal year. John, did you want to come forward to speak to this at all? Or? No? I didn't know if there was anything you wanted to introduce with it. So, um, Is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak to any of these items? Seeing none, uh, I will look for a motion to accept and approve the various grants and appropriations as outlined in the items 
here on the agenda. Can I ask a quick question? Sure, you can. On item 114, 2019, there appears to be a typo. Mm -hmm. It's either $28 or $28,000. Good catch. Considering that it's Mr. Cordero's salary, I believe we need to add another I'll zero to that. the right. I'm going with the 28. <laughs> the 28. Oh, John Cordero, town finance director. I'd be happy to accept the 28 if that's what you're willing to do, but it should be 28,000. Okay. Good cool. catch. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Jordan. <laughs> Councilor And uh, should the Durago Safety LC be an LLC or? Um, and the only other one is I don't know what mole is on 111 if anyone knows, but if not, I'm fine with it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was curious about that too. Yeah. Do you know what that material is? I assume. That, uh, oh, go. Sorry. Item number 111. Yep, last word. I can answer that question. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. The mole are the pockets on the vest Got it. for the police officers to put various things in. Why the grant made a big deal about it, I can't answer <laughs> that. The purpose of the vest is to take the weight off of the officer's hips and put it on their uh, trunk. Thank you for that clarification. And, and it should be LLC. Yep. <coughs> Any other typos, grammatical errors, number of misrepresentations? <laughs> <laughs> Seeing none. Just yep. Just a, if, if the council has had the opportunity to uh, come down to the fort to see the paving project in its completed that state, it came out great. Uh, they did a great job, really. Uh, LP Murray did a super job, as well as Tamara Landscaping with the installations of what we had uh, done there. So uh, people are, have been very happy uh, to have that, and uh, it's being used mm -hmm. regularly, <laughs> to say the least. So uh, that, was, that was a great project. So we're glad to close this out. Yeah, I've, re I've actually received unsolicited a lot of good f positive feedback about that too. So um, kudos to uh, the team, all the team involved in that, from the um, uh, the contractor as well as all the staff that helped coordinate that. So yeah, definitely, definitely. Thanks to Bob Malley and Kathy Raptus and Kerry Curtis when he was working with us, as well as Mitchell and Associates. Uh, they it really, considering the fact that they. We, Plan the project, execute the project that had it ready in time for Memorial Day. Uh, it was amazing. I'm amazed we got it done. So, and it's and there's some definitely some huge improvements environmentally with stormwater handling as well. So, yes, environmental as well as an aesthetic upgrade. Great. Okay, uh, so we're still looking for a motion to accept and approve the grants and appropriations uh, for 106 through 114. Is there a motion? So moved. Councilor Randall, is there a second? Okay. Councillor Penny Jordan, any further discussion on these? Seeing none, all those in favor? It's unanimous. Next is item number 115-2019, uh, goals from the, and objectives from the Thomas Memorial Library Committee. Is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak on these? Seeing none. Uh, as has been part of our practice for the year, we've been asking various boards and committees to submit their goals and work plans to the year, uh, for the year to us. I appreciate the Thomas Memorial Library Committee doing that. Is there uh, a motion to accept and acknowledge receipt of the Thomas Memorial Library Committee goals and objectives for 2019? So moved. Second. Moved by Councillor Penny Jordan, seconded by Caitlin Jordan. Is there any discussion? I, I just have a couple of questions. Um, and number two, the begin work on new strategic plan. I understand that, you know, why we want to do that. What's the timing and the process going to be? Have they laid that out yet? If I may, uh, yes, I met with the librarian today as well, and he's be, he'll be receiving the report from the consultant that they hired to begin the process. Uh, I believe uh, the library committee will have this to review in the month of June, and then they'll start to set uh, forward their 
their strategic planning process. I think they're looking to begin that in the fall. So they, they will be working with a consultant in order to develop the plan. Yeah. But they've had a consultant uh, who's done a project. She's met with multiple stakeholders as well as internal and external to try to uh, come forward with uh, a good amount of information so then they can get started with their, with their long-term planning. Okay, good, thank you. Yeah. Any other discussion? No, I, I'm just curious if it's worth, um, or I, I applaud the effort to do a strategic plan. I think it is great, and I think it'll be you know worthwhile to have that. I'm just wondering what the process is for us to get updated as they're developing that strategic plan, or what that might look like. Um, whether it's worth maybe having somebody designated to participate as part of that. I'm not volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> aren't, aren't you on Sounded the committee? Um, no, I'm on Is the committee the for the Thomas Memorial Library Foundation. For the foundation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Go ahead, okay. Matt. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. One uh, thought that may be uh, to have Jason O'Brien come from the library committee, and, and them, them, I know they're more than willing as, as they bring it forward to introduce, you know, to the start of the process, I think they'd be more than willing to come as they when they want to kick that off to update the council as to where they are. I think it would be great to have them at a workshop. Yeah. yeah. I would say that I think historically, um, I mean, you can point to the work of the comp plan, uh, other standing committees and or ad hoc committees that um, when they have sort of a major assignment, if you will, I, it would be the same, for example, with uh, what I anticipate will be an update to the Fort Williams park master plan, things like that, that, um, yeah, there'd be workshops and probably even, you know, other public forum opportunities beyond our, our open workshops for people to weigh in and, and things like that, so. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Again, thanks to the library committee. Appreciate when all the committees put these items together. It's helpful to see and good to see uh, the good work that's being done at the committee level as well. Is there anybody that wishes to speak to somebody to something that was not covered on tonight's very brief agenda? Yeah, this is, is this a record? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna wave, but gonna ask. Don't jinx it. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing none, is there a motion to adjourn? I don't know. It's too early. <laughs> Moved by Caitlin Jordan. Second. Second. Second by Penny. All those in favor? Thank you and good night. Oh my.